As the world continues to grow both in population and demand for energy and resources, technology must strive to keep up with the demand. As economics has described many times before, a system in which the demand for resources greatly outweighs the supply of the said resource is bound to encounter some serious trouble in the near future. Today on Super Freaky Science, we'll be taking a look at the mind-blowing and interesting invention of carbon nanotubes as a means of revolutionizing industrial emissions. With the increase in global demand for energy and the lagging supply in mind, technology and innovation have been driven to a point where there is an overwhelming increase in demand for energy and, ultimately, the increasing negative effects on global climate change. No larger than the width of a strand of human hair, innovation has come thus far to provide certain game-changing inventions called carbon nanotubes. These advanced technology carbon nanotubes have a great prospect for addressing the efforts being directed at global climate change. These new and exciting carbon nanotubes promise to be the building blocks for what could be the next generation of low carbon, a much needed step up from carbon dioxide captured from environmentally insensitive processes like natural gas emissions and oil production. Carbon nanotubes are the innovative efforts to reduce production-related emissions as the industry works to meet the ever-growing demand for energy. Should the nanotubes take off on their prospects, modern life will witness an unbelievable turnaround in making delivery and supply systems as well as consumer products that allow progress in the environment and climate discussion. What are carbon nanotubes? Also referred to as single-wall carbon nanotubes, thin-wall carbon nanotubes and sometimes multi-wall carbon nanotubes, carbon nanotubes are one of the allotropes of carbon. They appear in the form of an intermediate somewhere between flat graphene and fullerene cages. They exist as cylindrical modules that are made up of rolled-up sheets of single-layer carbon atoms. When they are referred to as single-wall carbon nanotubes, they exist with a diameter of less than a single nanotube. On the other hand, when they consist of several concentrically interlinked nanotubes, with diameters reaching more than 100 nanometers, their length can be measured to several micrometers and sometimes even up to several millimeters. The earliest credited discovery of carbon nanotubes is dated back to 1991, when Japanese inventor and physicist Sumino Ijama published a groundbreaking paper in which he reported the discovery of multi-walled carbon nanotubes. The structure of these carbon nanotubes is chemically bonded with sp2 bonds, which is an extremely strong type of molecular interaction. Multi-wall carbon nanotubes consist of nestled single-wall carbon nanotubes that are bound together by weak van der Waals. This is a result of carbon nanotubes' inclination to naturally rope together, thus providing the chance to attain impressive low weight and high tensile strength ratio in materials, while maintaining high electrical and thermal conductivity properties. Carbon nanotubes are also said to exhibit both electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity, all depending on their structural arrangement. On the other hand, some of the carbon nanotubes act as semiconductors instead. The graphene layer in the carbon nanotubes exhibit a certain arrangement known as chiral or rolling up. These serve as determinants of what electrical properties the carbon nanotube will exhibit. Chirality, which is basically a term that describes the angle of the carbon nanotube hexagonal carbon atom lattice, determines the electrical properties exhibited by the nanotubes. Based on the chirality of the carbon nanotube, the nanotubes can be classified into two kinds, the armchair carbon nanotube and the zigzag nanotube. For armchair nanotubes, the carbon nanotubes exhibit identical chiral indices, which make them and resulting arm-like chair shape perfect and highly desirable for excellent conductivity. On the other hand, zigzag carbon nanotubes are so-called because their chiral indices give them a zigzag appearance. They typically exist as semiconductors and can easily be converted into armchair carbon nanotubes by turning a graphene sheet by exactly 30 degrees. This works vice versa as well as turning a graphene sheet into an armchair carbon nanotube will convert its structure and its conducting properties of those of a zigzag carbon nanotube. For single-wall carbon nanotubes, conductive properties are observed based on their chiral vectors. 
This means that they can either behave entirely like a metal or exhibit electrical conduction, exist as semiconductors, or be entirely non-conducting. For multi-walled carbon nanotubes, they always exist as conductive mediums and can achieve, at the very least, the same degree of conductivity that is observed in metals. Having discussed the electrical capabilities of carbon nanotubes, they also exhibit very impressive degrees of thermal and mechanical properties. These make them a great point of study, especially in the development of new and more sustainable material. In reference to their impressive low weight and high tensile strength ratio, carbon nanotubes are typically lightweight, exhibiting a density that is nearly one-sixth that of steel. In terms of mechanical tensile strength, carbon nanotubes are nearly 400 times that of steel. In terms of their thermal conduction properties, carbon nanotubes once again impress with a thermal conductivity that is by far better than that of diamonds. In relation to their length, carbon nanotubes also have a very high aspect ratio as they are extremely and remarkably thin. In terms of stability, carbon nanotubes have their excellently crafted structure to thank for being highly chemically stable, a feature also exhibited by graphite. Carbon nanotubes can practically resist nearly any chemical impact unless they undergo another kind of duress such as high oxygen and temperature exposure. This instantly translates to a much coveted resistance to corrosion. How are they made? Currently, there are four methods of producing carbon nanotubes. These methods are arc discharge, laser ablation, chemical vapor disposition, and high pressure carbon monoxide dispropriation. Arc discharge, laser abrasion, chemical vapor disposition are described as batch by batch processes, while high pressure carbon monoxide dispropriation is a gas phase continuous process. Among these four processes, the chemical vapor disposition method is the most popular. This is because it produces a large quantity of carbon nanotubes and it does so in conditions that can be easily and effectively controlled and can be provided within reasonable cost. This process also allows control over the specifications of the products such as the diameter, length and morphology. For this method, manufacturers will take a metal catalyst, which could be iron, and combine it with carbon-containing reaction gases, for example, hydrogen or carbon monoxide. This combination leads to the formation of carbon nanotubes on the catalyst. All of this is carried out inside a high-temperature furnace. After the production process has been carried out, a purification step is made to follow. The unwanted formation of byproducts containing impurities such as nanoparticles within metal, metal particles in the tip of a carbon nanotube, and amorphous carbon are collected in the purification step. The high pressure carbon monoxide dispropriation method is also known for producing the highest purity in the production of single wall carbon nanotubes. It uses carbon monoxide as its carbon source and uses either nickel terracarbonyl or iron pentacarbonyl as the catalyst for the reaction. What are they used for? All of the properties of carbon nanotubes that were mentioned earlier in this video, such as electrical and thermal conductivity, tensile strength and chemical stability, make carbon nanotubes ideal for several applications. Carbon nanotubes can be used for making electrical devices, chemical biosensors, transistors, white light sources, cathode ray tubes and electron field emitters. Their hollow interior can be filled with other kinds of nanomaterials to help shield the carbon nanotubes from their surrounding environment. This is a feature that can prove useful in the application of nanomedicine and drug delivery. Carbon nanotubes can also be spun into fibers, making applications in areas like the textile industry an explorable possibility. That's a wrap guys, if you enjoyed the video, kindly give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, where we give you the latest freaky science.